We'll take a look at this. Blades pile up in West Texas. In Sweetwater, Texas. This is your tax dollars hard at work trying to save the planet. And here you have, these are all discarded wind turbine blades just thrown, piled up here. And look, there's neighborhoods. Look at this. Look at this. All right, let's get, let's get into this. This is an update, September 25th. GE filed a lawsuit last week claiming that Global Fiberglass Solutions has failed to fulfill its promise to recycle thousands of blades. GE says it paid the company $16.9 million to recycle about 5,000 wind turbine blades. But the GFS instead stockpiled them at facilities in Sweetwater and in Iowa. Only after GFS took millions of dollars from GE did GFS all but shut down its operations without recycling the blades. Mm -hmm. Reads the complaint filed in the U.S. District Court in New York. Go on, take the money and run. GE says it later contracted with another company to recycle its blades and is seeking damage to cover these costs as well as reputational damage. Yeah, because it's making them look bad. Global Fiberglass has not responded to the lawsuit. GE re removing its blades from Sweetwater wouldn't clean up the giant dump. Blades manufactured by other companies will still remain. Wow. So we're only going to clean up ours. But somebody else has to deal with the rest of the crap. Now, this is... Um, this all ties in. This all ties in now. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. Okay? <laughs> Let me make sure you guys get this in here. Okay, here we go. Every year since 1958, the West Texas town of Sweetwater has hosted the world's largest rattlesnake roundup, which is exactly what it sounds like. Thousands of venomous amphibians <laughs> are rooted out of their dens and brought to the Nylon Nolan County Coliseum to be gawked at, milked, and often beheaded and skinned. Okay, it started as a way for the region to rid itself of some of its least welcome residents. Now the community leaders wish they could do the same with the several giant piles of scrap that have for too long been left to bake in the sun. But that's providing to be much trickier than wrangling reptiles. All right, all right. All right, let's make sure I'm getting this in here for you guys. All right. About 40 miles west of Albany and Interstate 20, Sweetwater has unwittingly became home to what is possibly the world's largest collection of the unwanted wind turbine blades. Oh, for Pete's sake. I bet they're just, ugh. Look at this crap that's supposed to be saving the planet. When forklifts deposited the first of these in a field behind the apartment complex where Pamela Meyer lives on the west side of town in 2017, she wasn't initially bothered by it. But then the blades between, be, between 150 and 200 feet in length and mostly made of the composite materials such as fiberglass with a binding resin kept coming. And just kept coming. That's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. All right. Each one was cut into thirds, which each segment longer than a school bus. Thousands arrived over several years, initially blanketing more than 30 acres in stacks, rising as high as a basketball backboards. Wow. Wow. Every few dozen feet, a break among the stacks leads into an industrial 
Hodge Maze. I mean, it's just insane. That's just insane. It's just a hazardous all the way around, Meyer said. She worries about neighborhood children exploring the unfenced, unfenced piles and says that stagnant pools of water inside the blades breed swarms of mosquitoes. Matt Johnson, who works in a nearby warehouse, has other concerns. The piles create shaded nooks and crannies perfect for the Sweetwater's unofficial mascot. It's just a big rattlesnake farm, he said. Look at this. Look at this picture. Look at this overhead picture. Now keep in mind, we have been told for how long? We need to save the planet. We need to save the planet. Oh, we've got wind turbines. That wind energy, it's so clean. It's so fresh. Look at this. Look at this mess. Look at this mess. The blades were bought here by Global Fiberglass Solutions, a company based in Washington State. Yeah, of course it was. That announced in 2017 its intention to recycle blades from wind farms across the region instead of ending up in landfills. Okay. They would be grounded up into reusable materials that could be turned into pallets, railroad ties, or floor panels. Global Fiberglass is one of a few companies attempting to develop a viable business from recycling blades. Well, it looks like they can make quite a few things out of that big pile of mess. Besides... The main barnyard behind Mayor's apartment stacks of blades also uh, occupy 10 acres a couple of miles south of town, and the company is storing blades in other locations in the country. Oh, my God. They have, in my view, abandoned them there. Yeah, obviously, said Samantha Marrow, the Nolan County attorney. The county doesn't have and cannot find millions of dollars to clean this up. Oh my God, what a mess. The Sweetwater piles are also at least partially the indirect result of a, of a rural classification the Internal Revenue Service issued in 2016. Before then, a wind farm could collect viable, valuable federal tax dollars for, for only its first 10 years of operation, but the IRS determined that it would restart the clock on the credits of if a wind farm repowered its turbines replacing most of their equipment the new parts so despite the expected two decade lifespan for the turbine blades wind farms across texas and other states began replacing many of that remained in good shape years earlier oh my god i we all knew it was a bad idea it's just a bad idea just a bad idea. Some paid Global Fiberglass to remove the older blades and haul them away. The company set up shop in an empty industrial facility in Sweetwater that was once an aluminum recycling plant. But Don Lilly, the manager director of Global Fiberglass, told me that only a handful of blades had ever been grounded up. Really? He said the company was close to ramping up and would soon mill the blades into pieces the size of coarse sand. The blade material is sold, he said, but I can't go into that part yet. Okay. Okay. We should all be just uh, really outraged about all of this. Just outraged about all of this. Let's see if I can get this thing to uh, uh, do what I want it to do here. Sweetwater has heard such pledges before. Mm -hmm. The county declared the stockpile in a public nuisance a year ago. Really? It's been sitting there for, what, four years? And it's, you know, okay, it's a public nuisance now. City Attorney Jeff Allen said Sweetwater's local ordinances are aimed at overgrown lots, not turbine blades, leaving the city with limited legal options. He said he believes Global Fiberglass intended to be a viable business, but at some point it just came off 
the rails. Yeah. They said, bah. They took the money and ran. Lily disputes this and says the delays have come from ensuring and suing all systems were engineered. Okay. Okay. Sweetwater benefits from the wind energy. Okay. Including two large wind farms nearby. Drivers arriving on I-20 from either direction are welcomed by a giant wind turbine. Yeah, that's nice. Blade pointed with the town's name. But even the community's biggest boost of renewable energy long ago ran out of patience with global fiberglass mess. We'd like to see them gone, said Karen Hunt, director of the local Chamber of Commerce. The sooner the better. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, we need you to leave and take your crap with you. That, that's what we need you to do. We need you to leave and take your, your trash with you. Oh, man. Oh, man. That is just... That's just crazy. Sweetwater isn't the only place Global Fiberglass has stockpiled blades. So of course not. It has a total of 1,300 in Newport, Iowa, and two other cities in that state, according to the state's Department of Natural Resources. Yeah, there's some natural resources on there. After an investigation, the, ag the agency concluded in 2021 there was no recycling going on, nor was any likely to happen. Okay. It declared the company to be running an unpermitted dump. Wow. Flank Libel, I don't know how to say his last name, executive director of the Newton Department of Corporation, Corporation, testified at a state hearing that the initial estimate in 2017 of reoccurring a blade recycling company soon soared. In the in intervening years, he asked Global Fiberglass many times when it would begin its recycling. <laughs> He always got the same answer. We're soon. Yeah, we're we're right on that. Don't you worry about that. We got this. We got this. Don't you worry about it. Okay. By July 2021, the company owned more than one million in unpaid rent in Newton, according to the testimony at the Iowa hearing from its landlord's attorney. In Texas, it failed to pay taxes. Of course they did. To Nolan County in 2020. And it is now three years in eras, according to the tax records. Last year, the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality fined the company ten thousand dollars for what for what it described as illegal stored solid waste. It allowed the company to pay the penalty in monthly installments for three years. In June, Global Fiberglass defaulted, according to the commission. Uh, what they do with the sixteen million dollars that they got before? What they do with that? And Newton, pressure from the state of Iowa seems to have worked. Craig Armstrong, a city employee, said that General Electric recently acquired the blades. It's unclear whether GE purchased them from Global Fiberglass or from the landlord who was owed the one million in rent, who may have taken possession of the blades. <laughs> the city was promised that they would be a that they would be sent to a recycling center by the end of the year, although none had been removed by mid-August, according to a Newton City official. Lily declared to talk about the Iowa Blades. I'm sorry. Lily declined. She declined to talk about the Iowa Blades. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> he said the situation in Sweetwater is different. Okay. And insists that Global Fiberglass would grind down and recycle these blades okay if you come back nine months from now you will not see the material he said we're marking our calendars and we'll be checking back in may okay wow look at this look at this wow i tell you what this is a hot mess. Actually, wind turbines was the worst idea in probably the history of man. It kills birds. 
it makes a humming noise when they're near certain places. Uh, people live near them. They complain about it. They're noisy. Apparently, they're doing something to the whales. I should have found that article. They're doing something to the whales. They got them out in the ocean. They're making some kind of humming noise. Probably messing up with their Geiger counter system or whatever it is. They got the echo system going. So it's affecting them. All in the name of saving the planet. Tax dollars hard at work. And here's this other view. This is just... It's just beyond comprehension. It is beyond comprehension. And all these damn tree huggers. These tree huggers. So worried about the planet. We want clean energy. We want everything clean. And we want to save the environment. And we want to save animals. Well, they're killing animals. Right? With the wind turbines. They're killing birds. Probably killing the fish needs more research, but they probably are. They're probably not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And look at this. This is a breeding ground for mosquitoes and snakes. Rattlesnakes that could kill kids if go playing in there. I mean, if you look, kid probably go play. I mean, I don't know. If I lived near there, I'd like tell my kid, don't you even go near there. But kids don't do what you tell them to do. They're going to go over there, and there's going to be problems. Well, I thought I would bring this to everybody's attention because um, I just happened to hear about this on the radio driving home this evening and went, what in the world's going on in Sweetwater, Texas with these uh, wind turbines? The guy was talking about it on the radio, so I went and researched it, and here we go. So I didn't know about this. So there you have it. The tree huggers hard at work trying to save the planet, but yet creating a big pile of doo-doo. Just a big pile of doo-doo. There you go. And that's what's happening.